Good morning, seconds. So, so lovely to see you last Thursday for our sectionals. Um, I thought it was quite a lot of fun and just, just marvellous to see everyone and have a glass of wine. It was a, a great moment when we all toasted. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, so this week, the second movement of the Janacek. And um, what I'd like to do in the sectionals is possibly run the first movement again, maybe slow and nice and steady and check that we uh, all remember what we were doing and everyone's happy and then play through the second movement. And a, a little suggestion maybe might help next time is a pair of these. Now this is how a lot of the pros work. Um, so you put that into your, the, you tap this into your speaker or your laptop or whatever it is you're using or even your iPhone if that's what you're, you're on and then pop one ear in so that I'm playing, when, I, when we do the sectionals, I'll be playing right into your ear and then you can play along and if you're again muted, especially this movement, you need to be muted, um, then you'll hear me much more clearly. I think that will be better and you can still hear yourself but I think then you won't be sort of losing and trying to keep track with something that's quiet. So let's try that. Uh, these generally, I mean they come with every single mobile phone, there's generally a pair knocking around. I think I've got about five, so I could post some to you if you need. <laughs> um, but I just thought that might be an even better way to work with the um, sectionals. So the second movement. Now, the cellos have been entirely banished. So poor cellos, they get to sit and uh, I guess enjoy our beautiful sound. And so it's very warm, high and very beautiful, but it's very high pitched um, and they kind of, in a way takes away the importance of the top and makes all parts important. It actually brings out the violas again, that we have to be very kind of taking the bass effectively. So um, what I thought I'd do, because there are repeats, it's very short, so we will do repeats. And then what I thought this time is I will play the under part, so the second violin part, second part of the violin, second violins, um, so that you've got first the top line and then the, the bottom line just because they're quite disparate and um, I think each are equally important. In fact, sometimes the bottom line has a sudden moment that's really important. So here comes the first section. Oh, put my mute on. So that's the top line. I'll now play the same part again, but I'll play the bottom line. Um, if you're playing the top line, you could play along and play your part, see if it fits. One, two. I think the whole mood is very still and ethereal and really very beautiful and you've got lots of these bulges again and really they are so important now because otherwise it's just a very quiet piece that doesn't sort of say much but so we really need to make make use of those bulges and make sure they drive the the whole phrase through I think we need very light arms so I'd like you to sort of practice maybe feeling a balloon again underneath your arm and holding that bow really soft. Uh, I was talking to the first, I saw a great thing about some tutor talking about the, the, your hand being an octopus and I quite like that idea that you're an octopus here and you could practice maybe having an octopus and then try your octopus while holding your bow. And one of the key things and one of the key issues is tension in the thumb. So if you can try and really get that soft and that little finger really soft, you're just cradling that bow and you've got your octopus going through the seat. <laughs> 
and that will help here because we need this flowing sound it's pianissimo to start with but if you play it we have the same problem if you play pianissimo like this it's never going to project it doesn't sound very interesting and it's not saying anything to me so we need this light airy you're sort of drifting across the violin and if you've got a lovely light arm then you shouldn't have too many crashes or bumps as you change you're really soft and did you see i don't know if you could see but as i get to the heel i'm really quite high here so that i can change very softly so I think I hope that the fingering is going to help. Um, I wanted lots of vibrato, please. So it's that warm, lovely sound. And um, yeah, just enjoy the lines and enjoy the phrasing and make lots of the bulge, but then always come away. Always remember it's easy to get loud, but not so easy to get quiet again. Um, I'll do the second part now. I'm starting from bar 10 and I'll play the top line again. One. And then I'll play the same part again. So starting from bar 10, and now I'll play the under part. One, two. So again, um, lots and lots of bulges. This time we're heading towards a more dramatic moment. This is the sort of the, the crux of the piece, the high point of the piece. So I think at bar 10, a little warmer, a little more vibrato and a little more sound and then bulge and then we bulge a little more and a little more and then we come right away. So bar 12, 13, 14, 15, bar 15, we're really starting from bottom. And it's the pianissimo, pianissimo. And then we've got crescendo and a cello and we've got a crescendo hairpin underneath. So you can really go for it. So by 17, we're really flowing our arms and making those violins sing. Bear in mind, we're still muted, so it's not a massive sound, but it just needs to sound really warm and passionate at that point. Um, I have, I don't know if you noticed at bar 12, I really hardly did those portatos. They're really kind of soft and gentle. Um, and then in the top line, bar 15, I've hooked in that little F sharp to help with the bowing and then really ring through lots of vibrato as you go up high. Um, I hope the fingering again is just sort of arching up by, by degrees so you're not really going up too high, you're just staying around third position and just a little bit above. I've made a little mistake in bar 15 under part, sorry, my fault entirely. Um, here we go, I'll go from bar 15, pianissimo under part. better bowing i was faffing around with fingering in my head and uh, managed to mess up the bowing it's because you've actually got the moving part at bar 15 so don't slur in I'll, I'll pop it in the part so it's a bit clearer 
and uh, each part is really, really equal and important. So really go for it and enjoy and then come away. So by uh, the first and second time trial, we are dying right away. So we're really very quiet again. I'll go from the second time bar now, which is bar 23 effectively. No, 22, I can't count. Um, again, I will do the top part. Three, four. die away till either it goes into nothing or someone brings you off and again very light did you see I was sort of trying to flow my bow lots of vibrato and the bulges are now much quieter and more gentle and um, we're just really heading towards the end worth thinking about the fact that bar 24 25 26 26 the first have a very beautiful long line that's very delicate and might well take quite a bit of time so that means your entry in 27 might well come much later than you might expect so it's worth sort of thinking about that and really I think it's just sitting back in this movement so you're not sort of pushing forward and rushing through the phrases or the notes even each note is so important look after it make it sound beautiful and think is it going somewhere or are we sort of pulling back and i think nothing rushes when you've got the triplet don't go da 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 dum but ta da da dum it sounds much more beautiful if you just take your time almost over everything and then once you have, and I would, I, what I said to the first is it's quite amorphous, the whole rhythm. So I'd be very clear with yourself about the rhythm, maybe play even with a metronome. So it's very clear where every single note belongs because the first are moving at different times, the violas are moving at different times, and then the conductor will probably want to put in rubato and move the tempo. So once you're clear where everything lies, then that can happen. Otherwise it becomes a jumble. So I hope that's helped with the second movement. It's very beautiful and serene, and I look forward to working with you in the sectional on some of that, so trying to get some of the expression and uh, beauty. <laughs>